Today I'm going to show you how to make this lettering style that I call circus lettering. Now I call it that because it looks like the lettering from vintage circus posters. It's very fun, very eye-catching. It's just a nice style to know how to create. And in the course of showing you how to create this lettering style, I'll also give you some general hand lettering tips. Okay, so let's get started here. Now, first of all, I just made an exemplar for this lettering style. And you can see that the exemplar shows you step-by-step step how to make every single letter of the alphabet. Today, I'm just going to write the word hi, which obviously is two letters. But if you want to write other words or other letters, you'll want to check out this exemplar, which you can find on the TPK website. Now, just like if you're creating dip pen calligraphy, you'll want to have two pieces of paper. So you have the paper that you're going to be writing on, and then you have padding paper, just to make sure that your pen has a nice surface to write on. You can write on any piece of paper that you want. This is 32 pound laser jet paper. Now, if you don't have one of these, you might consider investing in one. This is called a parallel glider. And basically what it does is it creates parallel lines very well. And so what we're going to do first is I'm going to line up the top of my ruler with the top of the page and put it over here a little bit so I can see the left side and then I'll drag it down. I want to make sure you can see this here. Okay. And then I'll go ahead and draw a line here. And then I want to make these letters about an inch tall. They'll end up being about a quarter of an inch tall after the embellishments, but I'm going to draw a little guideline right here at the one inch line. And now I've got my guidelines that are an inch apart. Once I've done that, what I'll want to do is go ahead and draw my H and my I. So you can freehand draw these, but you know, since we've already got the ruler out, we might as well use the ruler since both of these letters have a lot of vertical lines. So you'll just line up the ruler with the edge of your page and then make the first stroke of your H here, go over a bit, make the second stroke about right here, and then we'll go ahead and make the I, and you'll want to make that fairly far away from the H because we'll be adding a lot of, um, of girth to the H here. And then let's make this crossbar just about in the middle of the H. A lot of hand lettering styles do require drafting out in pencil first, and it's always a good idea because you can make sure that your layout is perfect before you invest the time and the energy into adding ink. So once you're done doing this, what you'll want to do is just add some substance to these letters. So I would just go ahead and add about 1 16th of an inch on each side of these strokes. And you can just freehand draw that if you want to. You can see that I'm really just sketching here. You don't, you know, really care about creating perfect letters because if perfection was your goal, then you would be typing something out on your computer, right? So this is really just for artistry and for fun. And we'll do the eye over here. And you can see I like to rotate my paper a lot to work. That's always a good idea. Okay, so now at this point, we're going to add a few embellishments. 
Anytime you have a blunt edge, like what you're seeing here, we're going to add mermaid tails. So basically just two curvy triangles and you can just freehand draw those as far as you know how far they extend from the letter. Again, the goal here is not perfection. And then whenever you have a letter with a crossbar like this H, you'll want to, you know, sort of make the crossbar into a bit of a triangle. So we'll just move this down and then try to keep the crossbar the same width as, you know, your original stroke here. And then add some diamonds. And it doesn't really matter where you put your diamonds in each letter, that's kind of your choice. Well, it is your choice. But for these two letters, I suggest putting them here for the H and then putting them here for the I. So now what we're going to do is add shadows. And this part can be a little bit intimidating if you don't understand perspective. That's fine, just go with what's in the exemplar because you, know, you can see that I show you exactly where to draw these lines. But for this H, basically you're pretending that you have a light source coming from right here. So you're pretending that you have a lamp that's shining down here. Where would the shadow be? So this is where the parallel glider comes in really, really handy because you want to make sure that all of these shadow lines are parallel to each other. So every time we have a right surface, a right edge, we're just going to draw a pencil line along that edge. And you can see that the parallel glider makes it really easy to draw these parallel shadow lines. And it doesn't matter how long you make these because you're just going to end up erasing them anyway. And then for the eye, it's pretty easy. We just go over here and then over here. All right. So once you draw these, you're going to use them to make shadows. So your shadows are going to be, again, about 1 16th of an inch, but you can just eyeball that if you want to. It doesn't need to be exact. And basically, these shadows are going to give these letters dimension. And then when you get down here, you'll want to just follow the contours of this bottom part. Now, if you look at the exemplar, I shaded in this shadow part with pencil so you could see where the shadow is. But you don't have to do that because this step takes extra time. It was just a visual aid for you. And if you know where your shadow lines are, then you should be perfectly fine. At this point, you'll want to get out either your dip pen and ink or a permanent fine tipped pen. Really the pen that you want to use is completely dependent on whether your pen tends to smear when you go over it with an eraser because we are going to need to erase all of these pencil guidelines. So I'm going to go over this letter with ink and I will speed up the video after a little bit so you don't have to sit through it in real time. But what I do want to say is sometimes you may find that your hand is fairly shaky as you're tracing over this, don't worry about it. Remember, we're not trying to be perfect. We just want to make something that looks nice. And if you can't stop shaking, that's okay.
Now after you trace over everything, you'll want to add some little dots here along the original lines that you drew, so the original sans serif letter. And then you'll just need to guess in here. And then we'll go over and fill out the other letter as well. And then with this Sumi ink here, I can wait about three minutes and then I'm able to erase my pencil guidelines. So hang tight. Okay, it's been about three minutes and my ink is dry, so I am going to erase my pencil guidelines here. And this is also a reason to draw your pencil guidelines slowly, obviously. So after you erase, there's no trace of these guidelines. And then you've got your finished word here. Now before I let you go, I want to talk a little bit about the different pens that you can use to hand letter. A lot of hand letterers love these microns, and for good reason. They're permanent, they're archival, which means that they don't have acid into them in them that's going to eat into the paper, and they're easy to draw with. The downside for me is I find that these tend to soak into the paper whereas ink like Sumi ink sits on top of the paper. So that means when you go to erase, uh, the eraser takes you know just a little bit of the paper off when you use it to erase. A little bit of the very, very top layer of paper. So that means that your Micron pens aren't going to dry quite as vividly black as Sumi or India ink because you're taking off a layer of the pen, if that makes sense. So since you're taking off a layer of the paper, a layer of your pen comes off as well and your letters end up being a bit less vivid. However, if you're intimidated by the dip pen, this Micron, great choice. Also, fine-tipped permanent markers like Sharpie are also an awesome choice for hand lettering. One thing I would not use for hand lettering is gel pens. So I love these uh, pens normally. This is a Pilot G205 pen, and this is a Jelly Roll pen. But if you write with these, it really doesn't matter how long you wait. When you go to erase, it smears, always, even if you wait overnight. So I tend not to use gel pens, even if, you know, it, it really would be the easiest way to go. I usually will use a dip pen because I know that my ink isn't going to smear. So if you can use a dip pen, that's a great choice. Micron, another great choice. Try to stay away from these and happy hand lettering.